Hello. So, Tabu speaking. Hi there. Brianna, hi. You were in the last lesson, weren't you? Yeah. Hello there. Hello. And where do you live? I'm from Serbia. Ah, your, your name doesn't look so Turkish to me. Really? I'm from Serbia. You can call me. You can call me Anna. And you said you're from Turkey. No, no, no. I'm from Turkey. Sorry, I, the sound is not good either. I still don't know where you're from because the sound is not great. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you're Anna. Yeah. Ah, because I, that's another confusing thing, because when I look for you in Google, your name is different. Yes, so uh, I can see your name um, with, looks like you are from Serbia, but I thought you said Turkey and I misheard you. Okay. The voice is very bad. Yes, the sound is very bad. I hope it gets better. Oh my God. <clears throat> we couldn't understand you, Anna. Anything. Leon, are you there? Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So I'll start off, as usual, with the demonstration of three levels. So taboo, uh, taboo is a kind of word describing game. And uh, I, I think that we will play three levels and you can choose your level. The first level is to describe a very simple visible noun. And if you haven't played the game before, all you need to do is look around you, find something that you can see, and don't tell anybody what it is, and describe it for us. So, visible nouns, including things in the room, window, door, um, bed, chair, wall, ceiling, all of those things can be for level one. Level one can also include anything outside the room. And outside the room, the visible nouns that you can't actually see right now at the moment. So you can do tigers, or an elephant, or a pyramid, anything that's visible if you were to look at it. That's level one. I'm going to do level one now. Try to guess the word, please. Um, they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. They can be rectangular. Um, they can be circular. Usually they're circular or rectangular shaped. Um, often they have patterns stamped on them, patterns. 
Now, you can ask questions as well. So if you don't know the word, you can ask anything you like about the word. So would you please just ask me some questions and try what? to find out what it is? What is it made of? Um, well, it's made of, um, or they are made of, uh, the base material is usually something like a cereal or comes from a cereal. And it's often added to with sweet things, for example, chocolate. It's a civic thing. It's well, there's one word. The word is very specific. So when we play this game, you must have a very specific word at least. But the word is a very specific word. But um, if I use this word, these objects, they can have different shapes. Maybe it's cake. It isn't cake, no. Can we eat it? Now, cookie is close, but cookie isn't quite the word. Now, yes, we can eat it. Muffin? It's not a cake, really. It's more, okay. of, it's harder than a cake. It comes from, um, in French, the word means to cook twice. If you look at the word, you can see in French Biscuit. or Latin. Biscuit. Biscuit. Yes, but how do you pronounce it? It's pronounced in a different way. That's the right word. You've got my word. Biscuit. Biscuit. Yes. So the ending, the last syllable sounds like um, kit, first aid kit. Biscuit. Yes. So that's level one. I'm going to do level two and level three and then we're going down the line. And when it's your turn, you can do any level. Level one, level two or level three. So level two, Level two words are any word at all, any word at all. So I can uh, stick to my level one words, but I can throw them to the side and say, level two is any word, uh, for example, an adverb, an adjective, or a concept or an idea. So my level two word, I'm thinking about it right now, yes. Um, my level two word is one of the words which is regularly mispronounced because you know there are some words in English that have um, unstressed syllables and there are some that I call super unstressed syllables and this word has a problem with pronunciation and it's in my list of the top 10 mispronounced words actually the word word is also on, on that list because so many times I hear people going to hospital, hospital ward. But uh, this word I'm looking for is a bigger word and it's on my list of um, mispronounced words. But it's actually a nice word because it's positive and it describes something that is generally quite good um, in this way for your body. For example, a chair or a bed can be described using this adjective. Furniture. But uh, furniture is a noun and I want an adjective. Comfortable. Yes, well done. So can you see what I said about the pronunciation? Because yours was not bad, but if you hear native speakers say this word, you can hardly hear that there are four syllables. Oh, comfortable. Yes, you hear three syllables. Comfortable, because the, there's a buried super stress, super unstressed syllable between the m and the f. It's a little uh, comfortable, comfortable. So it's really um, the kind of way that you hear this, you hear all kinds of mistakes with this word, because the first word, um, table is not there and but when you get to be quite good at English you realize this you realize that there's no table in it and there's no com so we don't have com com for table 
So that would be um, quite a mouthful, wouldn't it? So we have comfortable. Actually, the words in English which begin with C-O-N and C-O-M reverse the general rule of stress patterns. The general rule, where, where does the, the stress generally fall on English words when they're not too long? Which syllable usually carries the stress? On, in most words in, in the English language, which syllable usually has a stress? I think the first. Yeah, the first syllable commonly has the stress. So if we take some two-syllable two words, just um, write a few down. Write some two-syllable words down, like um, garden. Every time you write a two-syllable word, they will be stressed at the beginning. But some of them are not like Japan, Brazil, um, away, but most of them are on the first. But when we look at these words, just give me some please, give me some of these words everybody, just write a few of them down before I do my level three. Write some words down, beginning with C-O-M and C-O-N. Control, control, second, control. Communication, commune, communication, communication, communication. Actually, that's right down the list. Communication, competition, 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 da da da, competition, condition, second. You see, none of them have a stress on the first syllable. So now, here's a problem. There are some, some words begin with C O N and C O M, and they have a stress on the first syllable but they are kind of reversing the general trend. The general trend is reversed. So um, what I'd like you to do is find those words for me. Just find some words like that. So I want some com. Think about com. And when it's unstressed, it has the ah sound, ka. But when it's stressed, uh, sorry, when it's unstressed, it has a k sound, like kum come sometimes but when it's stressed it will have a calm calm and um, I want you to find some of these words coming ah oh, well that's not really one of these words because it's not a prefix it's the main verb uh, that's different it happens to have it happens to have com at the beginning but it's not one of these words so concentrate yes concentrate that's the conquer but continuation, no. Conquer, right, let me write these because they're going on my, I have to write these up later. Concentrate, that's one. And uh, continuation is not because it's contin, con, 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 continuation, continuation. Or even if I say con at the beginning, I have to keep it quiet. Continuation, continuation. Contradiction, contradiction, that's good. Compile, no. Commute, no. Second, second, compile, commute. But continuation, continuation, tin. So, commute. So, I've only got, you see, you've only given me two. Common, common. That is, but that's not one of these words because it's not really a prefix. Prefix. Okay, so let me go on. Level three. Level three can be a collocation. Or it can be a little idiom. It can have a few words, not too many, but maybe three words, two words, three words, four words. So mine will be, um, I'm going to look at my new idiom book, which um, Hildegard has written just recently. and She's put some MP4 videos up and they're growing all the time. Let me show you. Um, Idioms in English, yes, I'll show you. I'm going to choose one from this book. I'll post it in here as well. Because I, I'm actually collecting uh, MP4 videos about idiom. And if anybody can give me one, then later we're going to have a kind of rating game. And you can rate everybody's and see which one is the best and they get a prize. So uh, you need to make one 
have a look at the examples. I'm going to choose one of these idioms now and I'm going to describe it and then you have to guess it. That's my level three. Right, my idiom. Three words. And it means that there's a situation where maybe it's a good idea not to do this. Often we say don't do this because it's something we don't want. Hey, don't guess the ones that I'm not even saying because you won't win like that. That's guessing. That's like when we play level one and you say, does it begin with an A? No. Does it begin with a B? No. Does it begin with a C? No. No. And after a while, we get annoyed. So no guessing, just think. So idiom. We say don't do this because if you do this, you could upset somebody. So it means let, let everything go. Let sleeping dogs lie. Let them just carry on. Don't do this. And if you do this, people might not like it because you're... You know, you're not just going along with the, you're not going with the flow. You are causing a bit of a problem, maybe, or you're um, complaining about something. So, three words. The first word is something like a stone, or some kind of music. And the third word is a vehicle. Don't. Ah, oh, oh, don't rock the boat. Yes, let sleeping dogs lie. Just leave them alone. Do, don't do anything. Just wait, and they will come back. Um, you know, little Bo Peep. Well, that's not the same thing at all. But don't rock the boat. Don't um, cause a problem. You might end up um, opening a can of worms. All kinds of things could go, could happen. So just. Leave everything ticking over smoothly. Don't rock the boat. Right, down to the beginning. Alvaro, are you ready to do one? You can choose a simple, a simple level, level one, one, or you can or do, you anything. do anything. Okay. Uh, okay, I've chosen a, a level one word. Uh, do you want me to say something about it, or do you want to ask me? I think you should say something about it and then let people ask. Okay. Uh, it's like it's something you use uh, to very often if if if, if you are addicted to anything. <laughs> Cigarette. Uh, it's close, but but it, it it's plastic. It's made of plastic. Light, light. Uh, yeah, it's lighter. Sorry, Leon, can you hear me? Yeah, I've, uh, I've just, just heard what you're saying, but I'm looking for the problem with the sound at the moment. But everybody tried to ask questions. questions. We got some echo, so I'm muting, so I'm muting a bit. Yeah. Uh, do you use headphones because we heard our voice twice? Sorry, I don't have headphones now. Uh, I will try to get one, but I don't have it. Now. Okay, so let's guess his word in the echo, and then he can mute his mic. So what? Say some more, Alvaro. Lighter is his word. I said it. Okay. Lighter, uh, and, uh, okay. So we we got it. That's great. So because I can't hear. Uh, so leave your mic um, muted now, Alvaro. Until so it's your next turn. Just keep yourself muted because there's too much echo. And then when it's your turn next time, you can uh, bring the echo back. Okay. So, um, Anna, over to you. Oops, I've muted Anna by mistake. Anna, uh, unmute and you do yours next. I can't hello. unmute you. Yeah, hello. Hello, Leon. So, can you? Yeah, I can hear you now. So, so do yours now. Uh, I have um, one word, first level word, and it's a it's a thing you can eat, especially when you're nervous. 
or watching the TV, and it's two words. Can I uh, can I just tell you that the, uh, you, you heard me at the beginning speaking about word, and it, word is bird, and the hot horse sound. So when you say I need two wards, you sound like a nurse because you should say I need two words. And when you say nervous, um, nervous is also the bird sound, and it's not a chair sound. So not nervous, but that's like a chair. So you need word, bird, mm -hmm. word, bird, and you need nerves, um, nerve, er, uh, is also bird. Nervous bird, er. Uh. Okay, go on. So, uh it's a very small thing you can eat, watching the TV. Uh, popcorns. It's, it's very similar to popcorn, but... We don't usually pluralize popcorn, do we? We just eat it. Popcorn. It's very similar, but it's not popcorn. French fries, chips, crisps. Mm, no, it's smaller. It's smaller, yeah. you, you used to eat... Uh, a lot. <laughs> when you you can, when you <laughs> when you start, you cannot stop eating. Oh, like seed. But especially one kind of seed. Of seeds, sorry. Uh, rice. Not rice. It's a beautiful flower. A flower. Oh, Flowers are usually uh, poisonous. Aren't no, I mean uh, this seed comes yes, from uh, sunflower. A sunflower. Oh, yes, it's sunflower seed. And how do you say this word? I'm writing in the burbling chat now. Um, sunflower seed. C O M E S. <laughs> it's got an up sound like come. Come. Sunflower seed. Come. Sunflower seed, yeah. Okay, sunflower seed, that's good. Sunflowers um, are all very common in Hungary, where I used to live. And they're, they're quite pretty. We don't have very many here. In England, we use another, soil, another seed for oil, which is uh, more suited to the climate. And um, I think it makes up so much oil. And I was speaking about it yesterday. It's a kind of yellow plant. And it's called, um, it's actually got a, the word is actually rape, R-A-P-E. And uh, we use that here to, to generate oil or to, to make oil. But I like sunflowers. Mm -hmm. They're very tall and pretty. Yes, so, me too. In Spain, we, we use uh, olive oil commonly. But oh, we here too. Uh, every, it, olive oil is all over the shops here. And everybody has it in the house and it's used all the time. And, uh, it's very healthy and tasty. Yeah, it's good for cooking, isn't it? Uh, mm -hmm. Well, not not just cooking, but for mixing in the salads and things. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Olive oil. Yes. I don't, the only problem is it's it's not always that cheap. It, it, uh, when yeah. you get through bottle bottles of it, it's quite expensive. I think sometimes. Yeah, it's expensive, but. But yeah, olive oil is nice. So, um, Anna, are you there uh, to to do yours? <laughs> Oh, I don't think we're going to get it, but let's have a go. Looks like the sound is going to be a problem. Let's try. No. No, it's impossible. Have to move on to Jenya. Yeah, okay. I just think of one object which uh, I think a lot of women have in their bags. And this object can show you yourself. Mirror. Show you yourself. Mirror. Yeah, that's oh. right. <laughs> <laughs> when you said show you yourself, I I thought for a moment that you were speaking about a different kind of showing you, uh, like um, show your character, because if you have it, then it tells that you're a certain kind of woman. Uh. Oh, I, I won't say, anyway. <laughs> a mirror. <laughs> yes, a mirror. Yes. Uh, do, you, do you know a story, a traditional children's story, where there's a mirror? Mm -mm, I, I don't think. I don't know. Does anybody know a traditional story which features a mirror? No. 
I don't know. See, not white snow, snow, but snow, snow white. Snow white. Yes. Ah, snow white, yeah. Snow white. And what does she sing? What does she say? She chants into the mirror. She says, she says, who knows what she says to, in English? Holding the, the most beautiful on the world. the fairest woman ever or something? Like it's, it's like this, you know, because if you translate it into English, it, it probably, this is a very interesting way of um, practicing translation and learning that when you translate something, you have to think carefully about uh, more than the meaning. If you get something which you know has been written in English and you're looking at a translation in your own language and then try to translate it back and then compare the two. It's really interesting. Um, so in the real English version would be mirror mirror on the wall who is the fairest of them all and uh, you, you can try this exercise with some other text, some other things which have been uh, translated into different languages. So um, yeah, th that's Snow White. And what I, another thing I'd like to say about that is that it's very good to learn, a good practice is to learn one of these traditional stories, for example, Snow White or um, Little Red Riding Hood or um, the, do you know the story about the, the emperor with his new clothes? Oh. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. So I, I think I'll do a lesson about this. So if everybody can get ready for it, then I'm going. You can look out for this lesson. The other problem is though that I'm going to have a break up in my lessons because of the changeover on verbling. We're changing the way we're structuring all the lessons. Oh, yeah, I'm muted. Yeah, I, I have to try to um, organise those for the future. So we'll do some of that. Um, okay, so. Uh, We'll practice speaking that way in another lesson in the future uh, where you have to tell us a story, a well-known story, and you learn how to tell it. Okay. So, Igor, your, your word, please. Yeah, it's an easy one. It's not difficult. It's a noun. And it's a person who, for example, works uh, in an organization. And he... Uh, he or she, they uh, are responsible for um, for gathering money for a project, for example. Account <laughs> manager. When you say gathering, do you mean raising the money or just assigning it? Or uh, for example, they need money, and uh, that person uh, uh, maybe call uh, account companies uh, or maybe uh, go to companies or private person and say for what they need money and um, what project they have so they need money and if you want you can give for example one hundred dollars or that company can give how we can name how is named this person maybe accountant no he's responsible for uh, uh, gathering money, for example, for a project, uh, for an organization, for example. Prospect. No. Like charity or? Yes, maybe charity money, uh, for charity, maybe for a project, um, non-profit project, for example. Finance man? Who? Finance man? No. He or she work in a company, right? Um, and try not, to get money for company. Not necessarily a company, organization, um, um, organization, for example. In the, might it be in, part of a bank? No. Maybe uh, it's responsible. No, it's one word, and um, um, this money are for projects, for example, uh, for social projects, for example. This is not uh, money for um, uh, business money, but for um, kind of social money. How we can name this uh, person who goes, for example, or 
who calls uh, companies or private person and uh, say for what we need money and they persuade them for, to give money. Just one word? Yes, one word. Because I have two words, like a fundraiser. Yes, this is. Ah, is that just this one is word? One, this is one word, fundraiser. Oh, is it? That's where I made the mistake then. It should be uh, one word. It's yes. one word made by two, fund and razor, but it's, it's one word if you look in Google yeah, or see, whatever. Um, yes. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, if you write something, then you find out how to do it. because And, and sometimes with stress patterns too, uh, nobody remembers, but if you do it, then your fingers remember. Yes. So, but you used to, the one the dictionary to find this word. Google uh, you used, yes? Yeah, I, I did at the end, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, just to make sure, because when, when, there's, um, when we're speaking about whether it's one word or two words, then finally it's a good idea to check. But I generally t try not to open a dictionary um, because I think that dictionaries can get in the way a lot of practice and. Um, so I think that they're good to use, but you know, sometimes people use the dictionary too much when they're learning English. They lean on the dictionary and they're diving into Google and the dictionary all the time. I think that's a bad habit. I think it's better to have a, a notepad or something and just um, write down some words or go back in the, in the text and uh, revise them after the lesson. That would help a lot more. Um, that, that's a good idea. Sometimes if you lean on the dictionary, you don't remember anything anyway. But uh, I'm not criticizing Igor. I think that's, you, you do use the dictionary quite sensibly. No, I do not use uh, this uh, for dictionary. I, I know this word. I yeah. think you use dictionary to find this word because uh, Google. Because it's very easy to find with Google words. Yes, and, and sometimes I think people use the dictionary and Google too automatically. Uh, even as soon as people start speaking, they're Googling all the time. And I think that that's the problem. I think people shouldn't do that. They should lay off Google and then use Google just to find out the answers later or when there is a real problem. Yeah. Okay, anyway, that was a good word. So fundraiser. Sorry I spoilt it because I was... I. For a second, I thought um, it's a two-word uh, answer, but it's not. It's a one-word. So, you know, sometimes with compound nouns, it's difficult to know about hyphens, spaces, and single word made of two words. Um, the only advice I can give you is that if it's an adjective, it's quite likely to be hyphenated. That's quite a common pattern. But apart from that, when they're just nouns, they are... A problem sometimes because sometimes they're one word, sometimes they're two words, and um, you may even see hyphens. But hyphens tend to be more in the domain of um, adjectives. Jose, are you there for one? Hello, I I hear. Um, I think uh, I think in a in a in a thing that uh, in a place uh, in a best. In a best place, uh, where you you can take a, a little nap. Couch, hammock. No, he says avoiding the obvious answers, and it's probably one of the obvious answers. Sorry. Can you so, say it one more time? More guesses then. So not a couch or a hammock. You can sleep uh, a the little bed. at noon. <laughs> the bed. Like a siesta. Yes. <laughs> the bed. Or the sofa. Sofa. <laughs> sofa. Yes. <laughs> sofa. Sofa uh, so good. Uh, the bed is a big nap. <laughs> ah. Okay, so um, that was good. Nihan, are you there for one? Yeah. It's a noun, and I'm going to describe. It's a decorative object. It's uh, made of wood or iron or 
glass. Is it inside or outside? Is it uh, almost inside? You use it in, uh, in, in your living room. In the, in, in, yes, in your living room or your or your dining room, and maybe your bedroom. Uh, and uh, it's used in nights almost. It's used at night. At night. Is it lamp? At no. night in the day. Lamp. No. no. Lamp. Do you hang it on the wall? No. You maybe some uh, ways, but it's common uh, to use on the table or oh. on something. Is night light bedside lamp? No, but very similar. Does it plug in? What's plug in? Plug, does it plug in, I mean, um, to the electricity? No, it's not a um, mechanic or electrical way. It, ha it hasn't any wires. Do you put flowers in it? Uh, yes. Ah. Commonly. And vase. What? I, would say, I say vase and they say vase. No, no, uh, it's not vase. No. And okay, you have, and, and I say, and that right, uh, you use uh, candy, uh, maybe. You have to use it. It's not just a box. No, no. Um, it's a decorative object, and you use uh, with candy. Uh, candy? Candy, like sweets. Yeah, interesting. Something. Um, mm -hmm. Chocolate and stuff like that. Is it a pot for the sweets? A bowl. Sorry? A bowl. Yes. Is it a bowl? Ah. Do you know uh, what's that uh, word when you put uh, dried flowers like rose flowers and things into a pot? It's a vase, I guess. But it's um, it's like bowl or vase, but uh, we um, we don't uh, put uh, any flowers on it. We only put candy uh, on it. Oh. <laughs> okay. But I'm, I want to see if anybody can guess my word now, which is uh, something related to that, which some people have in their house just to keep the air fresh. Maybe um, like this. So some kind of um, dried petals and leaves. What's the word? It's the plant it starts with pot. P-O-T. But it's one of those compound words. And it's quite strange, actually. I don't know where this word comes from because it doesn't sound English at all. It's a popori. It's a French word. Yeah. It's I a mean, mix. A mix. The meaning of potpourri is a kind of mix of things. Yeah, um, uh, uh, things like usually sweet smelling, nice smelling things or herbs yes. or flowers and things like that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how long this has been an English word, but I think maybe, maybe it's been a long time, I don't know. But I'm not sure about that because some um, words have been in English since the beginning um, and they're in French words too but I don't know about this word but it doesn't sound like um, some of the other words it sounds a little bit yeah it new. sounds strange <laughs> it doesn't sound I mean there are lots of um, English and French words which sound quite natural nowadays um, yeah. in English because English um, <laughs> French and English have been connected in a long, for a long, hundreds of years, 
And uh, did you know that French was the official language in England? No, really? Yeah, uh, um, and then after the Great Plague, you know there was a big plague in Europe? Yeah. And um, when the, the plague changed everything in England because for some reason, people from, uh, ordinary people survived it, the plague a lot more than, the, the plague wiped out the aristocracy and the, and the top level of society because they were drinking water and storing water in, in big buildings and pipe systems and things and the plague hit that water system. So nearly all of these people died. But common people mm -hmm. survived, and then um, Chaucer, uh, in his time, started uh, writing. He was probably one of the first people who wrote anything like literature using the English language, because English before that was a kind of common people's language, and French was the official language. Yes, I know this. Uh, like um, I am from Turkey, and Turkish. Almost um, most uh, verse come from Arabic or Farsi uh, language. Uh, uh, in English, there are a lot of uh, origin of French verse. Yeah, and you could say Latin, really, I suppose, because a lot of the. But it, that's it's a very interesting topic. Yeah, um, Latin is very interesting as well because I I was quite interested by the fact that um, some languages have Latin, almost all of the languages in Europe have Latin in them, and Latin words. Hungarian has Latin, but it doesn't help people learn Hungarian. And yet, I used to, I used to say that the common Latin root uh, makes it easy to learn English or, um, or learn French or Spanish or Italian. Um, compared to, say, Asian languages, but I'm, I'm not so sure now. So we'll have to discuss that I, another time. It's really a tricky one. So let's move on now. Servet, uh, yes. are you there for your word describing? Yes. I am looking for a verb that describes the wrinkles on pants. For example, you can say, I don't want to sit down because I don't want my pants to think. Ironing? To need yeah. ironing, but uh, the actual wrinkles on them. Yeah, does it... Yeah, I think I know the word. Crumbled? No. It's a verb? Yes. There's, there's a phrasal verb about making somebody laugh really loud, really, really a lot. Uh, to crack up, but it's not like no, that. not that one. Another one. Hmm. Crack up is another one. Yes, cracked me up. There's an, yeah, there's quite a few actually. Yeah. What are what are they called? Why do you iron a shirt? Hmm. Yeah. If this happens, you will need to iron it again. You iron your pants to get rid of these wrinkles. You're speaking about the American pants here, aren't you? Yes. Trousers. Otherwise, otherwise you might get burnt, especially <laughs> if you're wearing them. <laughs> I should say trousers. Okay, well, that's see you next time, Alvaro. Yeah, um, well, no, you can... Yeah, pants, yeah, because cowboys call them pants, don't they? Um, so what are, what are we talking about? What's this word here? Can you do it with paper? Yes, I think you can, if it's the same word I'm thinking of. Ask uh, Servet, can you do it with, pa with paper? With paper? I only know the usage it's with trousers. I think I you can. Heard. I think you can do it with paper. Crumple? Ah, uh, not that word though, is it though? No. That's, like, that's more like screwing it up. But this would be a more deliberate thing you do with paper. You know, if you want a piece of paper to bend in a certain place exactly, you can do this word then. But crumple is just like your battered. Battered. Maybe rumple. 
That's a bit um, accidental and like you're going to throw it away, like screwing it up. But so the word in paper is a bit different to the word in clothes. Servet, tell us some more. Can you can you find any collocations or any expressions with it as a gap? Uh, I had to look it up. Green ops. Let me see if I can find my phrasal verb. Creased. Creased. Yes, creased. I said a little bit. Other. Yeah, I found, a, I found my laughing one. I've just found my laughing one. It's not colloquial, apparently. But I don't know who knows it. To laugh a lot is um, creased up. That creased me up. Creased up. You know, like, <laughs> bend, bending over, laughing. Yeah, creased. Do you know? I, I know a joke about that. I know. I, I I can think of a joke about creasing. Um, you know, two old ladies lived with an old man, and um, the old man was very old and he couldn't see very well. So. The two, <laughs> la the two ladies would often nip past him to the washrooms without getting dressed. But uh, anyway, uh, somebody came to the door and said, did you see uh, those two old ladies? And um, the ma old man said, yeah, yes, I think so. I think I did. And um, he said, he was asked, what were they wearing? And he said, well, I, I, I don't know, really. Uh, but whatever it was, it needed ironing. <laughs> yeah, enough of that one. So, so um, Ursula, your turn. Yes, it's uh, my uh, description is very mm, simple, uh, the, but uh, consists of two uh, of four uh, words, but one is uh, article and one is preposition. And uh, this name is a very uh, use uh, describe uh, things for that is uh, useful almost for for everybody, especially in the morning. And it's uh, the first. Uh, no, the first is article. The second word uh, describe uh, it's a noun, and is a small. Container, a small pot is made by, by made of uh, china or porcelain or so, and it's uh, and the third word is uh, preposition, and the fourth word is noun. It's um, a kind of seed. And it's uh, grow in especially in Brazil, and connected with Brazil all all all, all the time. It's uh, a lot of detail. It's very simple. Is it? And no, what does it mean? you cannot find this. this it list. consists of four words. The first mm -hmm. is article. Okay. Second is noun, a small pot, small container made of chi China, usually made of China. Yeah, and the fact that you said um, Brazil instead of India or China gave me the answer. No, no, no. Of coffee? Yes, of course. Coffee? Yes, of <laughs> great. A cup of coffee. Coffee is yes. connected with Brazil. That reminded me of the of the film Some Like It Hot, which I was trying to read because it's very interesting for vocabulary. And there's a place, a part where they drink illegal uh, alcohol in the in the times of the um, in in America, where when alcohol was not allowed and the prohibition years, and they were pretending to drink coffee. Yeah, coffee, and and we also read about coffee and Starbucks the other day. So coffee, yeah. I like coffee, but I, I like tea as well. I like coffee and tea. Do you drink tea and, tea and coffee, Ursula? I drink and tea and coffee, but 
not usually together, in the morning, uh, mm. not together, but usually in the morning, mm, I drink coffee. They wake, yes. it, they wake me up. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I love coffee. I like to make it. Um, I started with coffee too. Then how, do you, how do you make it though? Because there's at least three ways of making coffee, if not more. Which way do you like to make your coffee? Uh, espresso. Uh, like Italian coffee. Yeah. So you like it quite strong and small? If, but with milk, of course. In the morning yeah. with milk. Yeah. You know, when, when I was in Hungary, people drank it like vodka. Very, very small and um, immensely strong without anything in it. And just they just want to go and get it down. <laughs> but I don't like that. I, I like to drink it quite slowly and enjoy it. So I'm, I make mine with a, a one of those, what do they call that machine with a beaker and a plunger? Um, I know it's popular in Turkey too to make it that way, and English people like it that way. Um, you put the powder in the ground coffee into the beaker, put the hot water, boiling water on top, and then push um, the plunger down on, onto the top to stop the coffee getting into the drink. Filter coffee. We call it coffee machine. The filter coffee. It's not filter. It's not filter coffee. Filter is where you actually filter it with a sometimes with paper. Um, a, a, the, the, I have three ways. There's one which is like a percolator, which is good for the espresso. That makes a kind of noise. Like, yeah, <laughs> the best. And it comes out <laughs> through a little bit of metal, and that's good for the very strong, like espresso. Then there's another one which is a beaker and a kind of a plunger with a metal filter yeah. and a glass. And then the, uh, the third one is maybe um, with paper filters. Different ways. Yeah. Very different. <laughs> anyway, let's go down the line. Anna, are you there? Hello. <laughs> Let's have your I'm next here. one. But you are saying coffee and these kinds of things and it's look at the watch. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, my I have a second level word and it's very easy, as you said at the when you introduce the class, Leon, it's a very simple. It starts with the syllable call. Call and it's a noun when you uh, a lot of people used to have one of these um, things uh, it, it can be a hobby for some people it's a hobby you can do it with clothes with coins with perfumes collection yes it's a collection <laughs> it's very easy I told you <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Though. <laughs> so, Igor, Try yours. Uh, my word is from two words. Uh, my, uh, what I say, and uh, this is a company um, uh, that um, uh, a company that um, when, for example, someone uh, didn't pay his. Uh, uh, bill or uh, his uh, something do not pay for something for credit this company goes and uh, take uh, uh, and um, and call that uh, client or customer and say that you need to pay how is named this company type of company and this com I don't I know for sure that in United States it's very uh, spread it, this type of business of companies. Say again. A company that uh, uh, that when, uh, for, for example, if uh, a, co a company has uh, customers and some uh, customer do not pay their bill so uh, uh, and do not pay he do not want to pay that don't. Mm. yes uh, that company uh, who your customer gives your data to another company well they sell it don't they actually they sell it's your data vindicator how vindicator vindicator no 
No. And they give your data information because they have an agreement. Uh, they have an agreement uh, between the, the and that company, for example, starts to call you and say that you have a debt. Uh, please uh, pay your debt. Thank you. <laughs> and um, in the United States, I know for sure that it's very spread with business. Effort business. I know the meaning, but I don't have the word. <laughs> If you have uh, debt, uh, so uh, yeah. this type of companies calls you and they uh, pursue you to uh, to 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 pay your debt. Do this company like sue you, prosecute you, or just they call you like a call service? Also? They they cannot uh, prosecute. They uh, cannot prosecute. They can give in uh, in. Um, Mm, or a judge, uh, how is is in the uh, instance, and they can give you data in um, the one where uh, is judge and this kind of people. Um, judge, where is? You mean in courts? In courts, uh, they can give you data in courts, but uh, they usually do not give because the amount of money that you owe is very small amount, so they only call you and uh, say you. <laughs> yeah, you know what they do? They, they, they um, use a computer to keep calling you on your mobile phone. And it, all you need to do is change the ringtone and um, it rings once or twice and then they give up because they, they work on no, statistics. No, but here is one moment that you, when you want to uh, take a credit for something, for a house or something, they uh, look uh, in data and you, uh, you are there with... Uh, Depth, so you can well, uh, uh, you if you, yeah, if you've done something wrong, like not paid something you're really supposed to pay, then maybe. But you know, I think that there's a case today where uh, lots of people are too uh, easily, too readily providing, uh, selling their debts to or so-called so debts to debt collection companies because they actually get some money for it. And this I is think it, debt collection company, debt collection. Collection, collection agency. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I disagree with the way they work these days. There should be new laws about it because I tell you twice in the last uh, year, I had a, a disagreement with one internet service provider and I ended my contract because they broke the contract because according to the terms of the contract, they had broken it. So I went in there and told them I'm finishing and then I gave all the boxes back. I even took them down and wrapped them up and said, here you are, thank you very much. And then later they passed my debt on or apparent so-called debt uh, to the debt collection agency and I was paid fully up and, and another time it happened similar to that as well so I think some companies need to be regulated a bit because they're just um, doing things in a bad way uh, these days sometimes but you can to do not pay if you want well I don't pay of course if I'm right I just don't pay I just wait for them uh, to go to court, and if they go, if they pay lots of money to take you to court, then I will win the case. But um, they don't take you they to court. They don't go to court. For no, a, they just so bully you. They, they they work on the basis that your wife will be worried about it, and they your wife will say, "Oh, just pay that fifty pounds, no problem." And if you want to take a credit or something, you want to buy expensive, you will need to pay to close this uh, because this data is. Ah, well, that's not the case here because no? I think. Um, uh, you can get a bad credit rating. With yeah, some, yeah, but bad credit rating. I don't think that some of these debt collection agencies have really got that power. They're just bullies. They're just uh, trying to gather it statistically and hope to make some money. And they make. They do, yes. A lot. And they should be regulated. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, that's it for today. See you soon. Thanks for that.